What's up, LA Film School? Music business. What's cracking? Give me some. Give Battle Cat, super West Coast producer, original pioneer of the sounds you just heard. My name is Big A. I'm the VP of DPG West Coast OG. I started in this business with Easy E. Rest in peace, homie. You a part of that? He's a part of this. The movie's coming out. We're shooting in Compton. Little E is going to be a consultant on that. But we're here today to let you know how important it is to be where you are today. I see all you guys out here. You have a vision. I had the same vision as you. I just didn't want to produce music. I wanted to be behind the producer, and I'm calling the executive producer. But my motivation was where you guys today. This is the place to be where you are today. In this seat, in that classroom, getting that information. You feel me? This man right here had a gift. This is DJ Cell. Give it up for DJ Cell. He's one of our team. He's been DJing with the Dog Pound for years. He's, he's been in the game for years. He used to be part of a hip hop thing back in the day called the Real Deal Showcase. He's DJ tour with Cat Williams. But this is our passion, this is our life. If you have it in you, you will get it. I'm Big A. I just want to say one thing. We're going to bring my homeboy corrupt up in a minute. He's going to have a few things to say to you guys to keep, inspire you to see the vision of where you are today. I was once in that chair and I had a vision. I don't know how to rap, I don't know how to make beats, but I do know how to administrate. Easy e gave me the administration game. I love it. I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I haven't, I haven't, haven't really had a bad time, bad experience. I didn't travel around the world because I was in that same seat as you guys. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it over to DJ Cell. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm available. We can chop it up. I talked to a few students already, but like I said, LA Film School and Recording Engineering here is the place to be. Give it up. I love y'all. You can unmute the mute. So you got him unmuted. He's ready. So yeah, like I was saying, I appreciate you guys having me here. And it's a blessing to be able to uh, have an opportunity to come back here because I told my wife I was definitely hungry and educated. This time to want to come here and expand my skills and my experience with working with the greats in R&B and rap and being a KD mix master as a radio uh, DJ as well. So it's been a blessing to come up here and share with the youth how we are able to give back. You know, we could be in any place in the world, but we we were just uh, so, uh, so humble with the uh, opportunity to come here and be supporter to you guys' education and careers. So if any questions or any ideas that you have on your mind you, you always want to share or ask us, let us know. We'll be uh, having Rhonda Siddiqui in my uh, uh, management. She's a come, she'll come and support you guys and give you all the information you need. So without further ado, I think we're ready to do this. I never go anywhere without my guitar. Uh, I'm Del Breckenfeld. I'm Director of Entertainment Marketing from Fender. I guess you know what Fender is. Thank you. Um, before uh, Corrupt comes up, I'm just going to say a few words. We, I've been affiliated with the film school uh, for many years. Uh, and Fender, not only is some of this gear you see from our company that we support the LA Film School and the LA Recording School, but we've also hired over 100 graduates with our company. So we're very, very proud of that. Thank you. Uh, I'm director of entertainment marketing, so I do film, I do television. When you see a movie like uh, Jersey Boys or uh, the new James Brown biodoc that's coming up, and um, many, many things on television, American Idol goes on and on. And I also work in the recording side with the record label, so I have a pretty good handle on what this school can bring. Um, I don't think, uh, oh, also on this stage, this is the stage that Elvis played on, The Grateful Dead, and of course, uh, DJ Battlecap. That was great, right? Come on, let's have a hand. Love having entertainment. Um, we did our PSA for our Fender Music Foundation on this very stage. We also did a movie with uh, Al Pacino that was filmed here. So it goes on and on. This is a great facility, and it's great to have something like the Ivar. Uh, since Corrupt is not going to let me play guitar with him tonight, uh, I think I'll give this one away. What do you think? Can we give this one away? <laughs> if, if you have that green ticket that they handed you, they're going to, right after Corrupt is done, 
they're going to auction, or um, I'm sorry, raffle this guitar off. So make sure that you have your ticket, and this is a wonderful Fender Stratocaster, our 60th anniversary this year, the Stratocaster, and so uh, somebody, lucky winner in the audience is going to get it. And now, if we're ready, ladies and gentlemen, let's hit it up for Corrupt! <laughs> You know what? Before we move. You know what? Before we even began, stop that cell. I'm going to give y'all a little bit of game. Because I don't think they understand. Battle Cat. Because I'm going to explain to you about this music. Now, what he was just telling you about and the company he represents is a key part of the entire Chronic, Doggy Style, Snoop Dogg's album, everything about the Death Row era. Not only the guitar, from the keys to the whole ball of wax. Ain't No Fun was created off of it. Everything you can imagine. Battle Cat, would you break down what this company has created, this entire system of instrumental music that they brought to the table? Wow, you put me on the spot. Well, listen, you know, unfortunately, when I was young, you know, I didn't have uh, that opportunity to buy my own guitar. So I was blessed to see my family come and take me to places where I can see the authentic way of how music is made. And especially this uh, instrument right here, you have the legendary Jimi Hendrix and whoever else you can imagine that's been responsible for such uh, interpretation and appreciation of the Fender family. And so, um, and coming up, Dre expressed to me as well, we're learning how to program. He wanted me to have another skill as well. So he said, Cat, pick up some keyboards and some guitars. The Fender, hap the Fender guitar happened to be the main instrument that attracted me to incorporate it into my music instead of depending on uh, a lot of other things that wasn't real solid for making music, you know what I'm saying? So I was very grateful that the Fender family has introduced an instrument that's been, instrument, that's been instrumental in everybody's lives. So I don't want to say too much, but it's, it's, it's definitely a mandatory instrument to use. There's other brands, but it's not, it's, it's not number one with Fender. Fender is the one, it's been the tone, it's been the expression, it's been the life, it's been the culture of us and doing music on the West Coast. So. I'm very grateful to have been a part of this because we can utilize this in the young generation to have them come back and appreciate live instrumentation along with the new technology that has been presented as well. So I thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, it's, it's not just hip hop. This is instrumental in rock and roll. This is instrumental in country and western. This is instrumental in every formula of music. There are no barriers. Music is music. You see Snoopy with Willie Nelson making country and western, not caring about what people think about him doing music with Willie Nelson besides what they smoke. You know, <laughs> they got one thing in common. They also have another, which is music. And uh, you know, this is what this is all about. If, 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 you know, they got something they want me to read so I'm going to read this to you because this is real. I've read it many times and I agree with it. There we go. But this is, this is real right here, you know, especially to be a part of this school because I would have never made it into school because, you know, I just didn't have the discipline or the patience. But, you know, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of patience to learn these things, these skills, you know. The Los Angeles Film and Recording School, open house is a big thing for y'all to be able to see artists who have made it in this game and done things, uh, experienced life with great producers and others who've been a part of it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as it says, as a performer, uh, well, yeah, that is real. I have worked with the greatest, some of the greatest uh, producers, engineers, and sound. Uh, put that stage text and all the rest of that. That's good. Audio professionals, Los Angeles recording school is 
Yeah, this is the best place to learn because if I would have been, if me and Battle Cat was able to, you know, be a part of this, to be able to come here, it might have changed certain things in our lives. You know, we had to go through so much through the streets and everything else. And we had to focus ourselves that, you know what, we don't want to really be too much into the streets and put our efforts into music. Music took us away from the problems in the streets, the politics and all the rest of the stuff. And that's a good thing about this school because it enhances these, uh, as you could say, these talents that you have that will be taken away if you're around the wrong influences. So this puts you around the right influences. It's all about your influences. One of my influences was Rakim. That's how I learned my ROM skill. Another influence was Dr. Dre. That's how I knew what kind of music I wanted to be a part of. These are the keys to the game. There's nothing that you can say that's original besides yourself. Because we all have inspirations. Even the Beatles was inspired by something and took a piece of this game. You understand me? They was inspired by European artists first, and then they was inspired by the black community. You understand me? And that's when they came to America. You know what I'm saying? Elvis was inspired by music, came from the black community. The black community was inspired by music that came from the white community. From the Latino community, we got music from there. So there is no barrier to music. Uh, it says, uh, one thing about being in this school, you must have a strong technical education and who be familiar with all of the various types of equipment and programs like LA Recording Schools offer. Did I say that right? LA Recording School offer. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Which means it ain't just about music. You know, there's some people in here that want to do engineering. There's some people in here that want to do the technical part of the game, the lighting part of the game. When it comes to the stage, there's people that might want to hook up the equipment. I mean, all of these things, these are all skills that you need to learn. You, you got to know what you want to do, stick to it, never give up. That's what I did. I believed I was the greatest MC on the planet. For those who don't know what an MC is, it's a microphone controller. I control the mic. I murder MCs for a living when I was, when I was young. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, man, that was just being nice. If I calculate them, it's like Wilt Chamberlain with the late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the two schools together, film and recording, offer networking opportunities and mix oh it is and mixers with industry professionals and organizations like being here with me and Battle Cat right now you understand me which we never never had that opportunity cat you know what i'm saying we had to go from the gut and we were accepted because of our talent which also another part of your talent is your communication skills you know, these people in this industry would rather work with somebody with less talent and a great attitude than to work with somebody who has a greater talent and a bad attitude. So your attitude is a part of your talent. I just had to throw that in there. That, that was my little piece of the game. <laughs> now being here, this is a great opportunity. <laughs> I'm just saying though, you know. Being here, this is a great opportunity to learn and can open doors to those willing to work for it. I like that, that was, that was tight. I felt like Obama right there. We can make a change. We're gonna make a change, you understand me? All right, did I do the do? Excellent. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show y'all a piece of this game. I want those that wanna be engineers, those that wanna produce, those that wanna get on the mic, those that wanna do both, like Kanye West, he does both. I'm gonna give you a piece of game. The one who put Kanye West in the game was Damian Dash. Because Jigga really wasn't fooling with 
Kanye at the time because he had Beanie Siegel. Damien Dash believed in Kanye West. Yeah, totally. Damien Dash was the one. And uh, Kanye West basically was a producer. He produced records. But he wanted to be on the mic. And it was basically like, nah, just produce. You'll be good as a producer. And he kept dropping records off, dropping records off, until finally Damien gave him an opportunity, went to Jay, basically. I mean, this is the story, and I believe it. And basically was like, man, I'm rolling with this cat right here. I love it. Let's roll. When Damien left Rockefeller, Kanye stayed with Jigga. And Jigga finally seen that this boy was worth that time and that effort. And he believed in Kanye as well. He always believed in him as a producer. He just didn't believe in him as an artist, from what I understand. Because I went through that as well, me and Daz. When we dropped the Dog Food album, it was Rage's turn. We just did Above the Rim, which sold a lot of records, I must add. Yeah, I did do that. And, uh, you know, Rage dropped, we dropped Afro Puffs, and it was cracking. And Rage was the one. Me and Dad was like, man, we ready to go. And it was like, no, it's Rage's turn. We said, all right, cool. Six months went by, Rage was still working. So we went to Suge and said, hey, man, listen to our records. The first record we played him was Bomb. You dig. <laughs> you understand me? And Suge was like, wow, OK, that's bang. You got any more? And we made a record called Respect. And we banged that for him. And then Suge said, oh, y'all really are ready. So he gave us studio time. He said, work on y'all album. I got y'all. And uh, so we had to fight and prove ourselves musically. Daz did the whole album. He did the production. A lot of people don't know the production Daz did. I'm going to go through some records that Daz produced that people don't even know. Now, production, there's a difference between producing a record and making a beat. You can make a beat, but if I take your beat and do all the other key elements to it, I produce that record. You just made the beat. Can you dig it? This is called business. Now we're going to get into uh, business. We're going to get into business now, you know what I'm talking about? You hear me? There's a difference between producing a record and making a beat. You make the drums. I could take your drums, have Superfly play keys on it, and Battle Cat add something else to it, and it goes out, and then you'd be like, well, I made that beat. You're right, but I produced that record. I made my first hit. The first hit I made, production-wise, I couldn't believe it, because, you know, I murder MCs. And when I saw Daz, because Warren G taught Daz how to work the MP, MP60, right? MPC60, right? And Warren G taught him how to do it. And what we used to do, because we was at Solar Records, which was uh, Solar Studios, which was, uh, it's Edmonds building now, right? It was Solar back then, off of Kawanga. And what we would do is, because we could never get studio time, because it was all about Snoopy. So, you know, Daz learned how to uh, rig the uh, elevator. So when everybody left after business hours, you know, me and Daz would go there at one o'clock in the morning and Daz would just <laughs> and next thing you know, we in the elevator and it would go up to the level and we just sneak in the studio. So he knew how to break into the studio. Like we in here, he popped the door open. He had a little thing and pop the door open and we go in there and we just recording records and boop up. Did you hear that? Man, that's nothing. Come on. And he practicing on the beat machine, Warren G taught him and that's how we learned the game. We had to sneak in and get it. Where y'all have the opportunity right there for you. And all you need to do is concentrate, believe in it, and stick with it. Now I'm going to show you what production is about. First thing is... Okay. Well, first thing is... This right here was made by Mailman. Dr. Drake took it. When Mailman came with the sample, he made the beat, and Dr. Dre enhanced it from the musical standpoint of, oh, he made these drums, he made this, he made that. And then Dr. Dre said, okay, we're going to add this. He brought the keyboard player and add this. 
add that, add this, and add that. What did it sound like? Stop. All right, one more time, because that's the wrong one. Go. Hold up. Stop. That was made by Mailman. And Dr. Dre took what Mailman gave him, follow my lead, what Mailman gave him, and he enhanced it by adding this part, that part, and this part. There's another record, he was just playing it, but Daz made the drums in the bass line to this next record. Then Dr. Dre added from the Moog these keys to it that just made it a hit. Before then, it was just a bass line and drums. You smell me? Bass line and drums. And then Dr. Dre took it and said, that, I like that, that's classic. And he added these keys to it. How'd it go? Dr. Dre added this. He added this right here. Dad made. Stop. I wish I could keep going, but you know I can't cuss. Because you know what we would say. You tell me. Oh my God. You hear me? This is just class, man. I want to give y'all this game more than I want to do anything else since I can't cuss. You hear me? Me and Battle Cat made a classic when I first left Death Row because Dr. Dre left first and then I was the first from the dog pound to actually leave and, and try and venture out and see if I could make it on my own. And I made one record. I went back to the grain because the first producers, it was two of them, whoever believed in corrupt production-wise was uh, Tony Tovin and Battle Cat. And me and Battle Cat, he lived on the next block from where I was at on 2nd Ave over there at uh, Broomie's mama's house. We posted there and uh, Broomie told him, man, I got this guy, man, he's wicked. And that's also a part of your game, networking, meet and greets. You meet people. You'll never know what they will bring to your table. You never know who people are. Never judge, okay? They can bring so much to your table and enhance you. What are you trying to do? So you're trying to engineer and be an artist. What kind of artist? So you bus. Is that right? I'm not mad at that. First thing about being an artist, perfect your craft. First thing about engineering, perfect your craft. And that's what everybody needs to know. First thing about anything you do, perfect your craft first. After you perfect your craft, learn the business. After you learn the business, go out and network. Once you get your first opportunity, your first is similar to your last. But nothing will happen if you don't learn the game. Being here at this school, that's what it's about. They're gonna teach you these crafts that you choose and desire to go for. Are y'all with me? You know, they say I'm taking up too much time, but I don't give a what. Let's give them something me and Battle Cat made. My first hit by myself. Let's rock. Thank you, you, know you hear me? <laughs> Bounce, rock, roller skating. Dipping down the streets on platinum dating. Bounce, rock, roller skating. You know what? I've been all around the world, Japan and Amsterdam. Hit them like switches dipping. Hit the switches, which is one reason why I gotta make mine. Cause these fools on the streets try to take mine. What's up, lady? Time getting shady. You gotta lick stick with it. That's why I'm sick with it. Hard to maintain in this world of pain, but I'm a 30. Like dimes are up. 
Why can't we just chill and get along? Mother, uh Choose your choose, they use the wrong Mother, uh Relax, being battle cat, we got it back to a T It's you and me, battle cat in the back with a sack on D On D Ride with the young OG OG Dip it down the shore, yeah, what, what up, up y'all? You bounce rock, skate on three Look, we Come on. D then Everybody do what? Say what? Say what? Give it up and throw it up. Give it up and throw it up. Now give it up and throw it up. Now give it up and throw it up. You can have a little fun and give it up. Give it up and throw it up. Now give it up. Now throw it up and give it up. Throw it up and give it up. Now why you tripping with me? Won't you kick it with me? Bomb the block, come bond the knot. I got me somebody bad as ooh. All the rest of y'all is mad as ooh. I'm dipping down the streets in my sky blue bit. Pull up to the curb and then swerve gently. Ten of the homies are maybe less. But they all ride with corrupt the best of the west. Like what? Weekend. Do what? Come on. What? Everybody. Look. Oh boy! I love y'all to death. Let's ride. Oh yeah! Do you wanna ride with us? Who ride with us? Oh yeah! Do you wanna ride with us? Who ride with us? Oh yeah! Do you wanna ride with us? Who ride with us? Oh yeah! Do you wanna ride with us? Who ride with us? Giving it up. Shaking, making the hood turn for the burn. Two buckets of yarn, dipping, chicken food, chicken, scraping the curb. Strap a touch, don't drink to the head, thunderbird. I'm on it, homie. Me and my homegirl, Johnny. Down with a nigga damn, then before a nigga surprise. Yes. My coach is hard, boy. California living with just a couple toys. I'm tired, retired, a couple jerseys. Went from the sunny state to Jersey. Puffin' Hershey. Let off, get off, or get spit off, spit off, spun off, spun off the chest, off the roof. 178 yeah. proof of boosters, gang that corrupt, let loose this, this, short chain, stick with us, sit with, with us, cock your heaters, sit with everybody. us, oh yeah, do you wanna ride with us, come on, come on, oh yeah, do you wanna ride with us, who ride with us, oh yeah, do you wanna ride with us, who ride with us, oh yeah, do you wanna ride with us, who ride with us, oh yeah, jiggle, You know I love y'all, man. It's a good thing and it's a great thing. Many of y'all will get in where you fit in, and a lot of y'all who don't, it's never over. You understand me? You gotta do like we do, make it happen. If you believe in it, never stop, keep going. Never stop, keep going. You hear me? What? I love y'all, man. Give it up for Corrupt, y'all. And DJ Cell in the building. Thank you guys for coming out. We still got more things to do and more people to come. So enjoy, take a break, and we'll be right at you. Explosive. West Coast shit, my nigga wish you turn it track. So you still turn me back. So need to yank they on it. It's like I would do them. It's explosive. <laughs> yeah. right here before we go. Who want the mic? 
How many people want the mic? Can't be too hyper now. Come on now. See, I told you it's about your aura. It's about your aura. Huh? About your aura. Very aggressive. That's what you call one. How y'all doing? I'm Chris LaShawn. No cussing. Oh, okay. You got something to say to these people? Hey, yo, I'm from Chicago and everything, man. I just flew out here yesterday. Talk to them, nephew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Look. I'm just saying what I see. Keep it one mil. Eyes forced to see, but the strap forced to kill. Trying to keep it real, cause people prosthetic, pathetic. Sam high. Yeah, I'm jetting. Yeah, it's no explanation. I could kill it, hella temptation. I just freestyle, and in the meanwhile, with a bad chick, she on speed dial. Ooh, why well, I gotta do it? Let me hop on it. This shit stupid. <laughs> see, now see, the first thing about him is his heart. It's all in the heart. You smell me? Once you get over the fear, your confidence rises. You understand me? Freestyle, that's my specialty. You understand me? I tell them like this. Look, 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 look. The first thing I learned since I was young and I raised these children, people get burnt. I spit rhymes that could break and build up buildings. I told these people, when you see me, I rise up and be at the top of the steeple looking at these suckers. Like, God, what? I know these mother, okay. You understand exactly what I'm saying. You can read what's going on. I ain't playing. I drop people down. AK friend, I'ma show them what it is. It's all rhymes. I got them. I break them down every time. When they see me, I got them on a lockdown. So you, that's all you gotta do. Just feel it. It's all in your mind. Hey, my turn. Where my guy at? Come. Uh-oh. My Come. turn. Come. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! We love y'all. Great thing. Where's my guy at? My guy. Love it. Whatever y'all do, go from the heart. Everything else will happen after. Let's get it. Corrupt in the building. Yes.